everyone happy monday so good to see everyone back on unveiling beauty Ammon cover how are you doing very well mr stenson what's going on down there not much did you have a good weekend oh, it was nice i got to go to uh saga talk i've never oh, been there before good. which First was time great for... yeah it's beautiful. beautiful little beautiful. lake town not far from chicago felt like a little bit of like normalcy in the midst of all this like you know covid craziness so i'm yeah i'm feeling good yeah that's good. I know a lot of people are doing the weekend getaways to try and escape the norm of COVID. I think everybody's had their full share of it and looking for some summer fun, right? For real, for real. Speaking, Speaking of, of summer, summer fun. <laughs> Can you tell that we love color? Yeah. <laughs> So today we have a really cool episode all around balayage, all around hair color. Ammon, why don't you talk about some of the great artists we have on for today? Yes, yeah, so we have George Papa Nicholas, and we also have uh, Sean Goddard from our pro team. Uh, and okay. we're going to kick it off today with Mr. Sean Goddard. So let's introduce Sean to the show. We have a quick little video. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Mr. Goddard, how are you doing, my friend? Hello, I am doing so good. Happy to be here. Good to see awesome. you again. Good to see you. It's been a long we time. We miss you. It's been a few minutes, definitely. <laughs> We're overdue. <laughs> I feel like that's my line for everyone. It's been a long time, but it really has been a long time for everyone. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I'm like beyond beyond just Zoom and then and, and these uh, these shows. I'm like, I'm missing I'm missing the actual Sean in my life, you know. I'll okay. give you a big hug. I know. We all miss it. That's for sure. We all do. <laughs> so Sean, talk to us about some color. You have a cool technique you want to take us through. I do, yeah. I have a really quick, you know, you guys know that I'm always about quick and easy and impactful. And you know, I was talking about with this with someone the other day. Everyone's talking about like COVID color right now, but I'm like, why do we have to think about it that way? Why can't we think about moving forward after this with a smarter way of working, not harder? So these techniques, I'm scrapping the name COVID color and we're just going for like a quick impactful technique because salons are finally opening and stylists are excited to be getting back behind the chair. So um, yeah, the technique that I'm gonna share today is a modern twist on like a bolder, I hate to use the word chunky highlight, but we definitely see that that's coming back in action now. We definitely do. So take us through it. Cool, so I have a mannequin head, of course, to set you guys up. Um, I'm gonna, they're gonna show you a picture right now of the mannequin head. So here's a look at the finished results. So you guys can see how that looks. I have her here with me in real life as well. So you can see that she has some bold pops of color, but it still has a soft, like modern edge to it. What's so great about this technique is that it's really all living on the top of the head. And then if you look underneath, she still has that depth, but you know, the depth is important to create the pop of that lightness on the end. So on the mannequin head that I'm gonna show you here, I actually did a little bit yesterday playing around more with this technique so i i left it raw and untoned so you could take a look at how that looks as well because i think sometimes we think that all the magic happens in the toning but if you actually do the color a little bit differently you can get away with um, not having to work as much on that toning portion so the section that you're going to work with let me get her up here is simply a rectangular section on the top of the head so it's coming from the occipital bone or sorry the parietal ridge and then coming back to a square shape just behind. The kind of rule of thumb I go with that is about the size of a peace sign or the width of where a foil would fit. Through the sides, what I did was I took a um, curved parting just going down to the corner back, as you guys can see that on there. And then I secured that up forward in a little ponytail. So we're actually gonna do that on both sides. And on the other side, I want you to see how that actually worked out. Okay, so here you can see, this is the untoned portion right there. Mm -hmm. So if you guys can catch how that blend is happening throughout, mm -hmm. that's created by using the ponytail, which is super simple. So here I'm gonna show you how we did that. What you're gonna do is take the ponytail because it is a larger section, just separate them off into thinner, more workable size 
pieces. And then I'm going to be just demonstrating with conditioner today, but um, you'll still get the visual. What I like to do is start by placing some color onto the foil. The product that I would work with for this is uh, Redkin Flash Lift Bonder Inside with 30 volume. So what that's going to do is give me like maximum lift and brightness in a really strong, fast acting lightener. So I'll paint that up and you can go as close to the ponytail as you'd like, just don't go right into the actual elastic. So then once that section's done, you can come through and take another piece, but you kind of have an option here. If you want to leave some more depth and dimension, you can take a slice and leave it out. And I'll actually just drop that behind the foil to keep that out of the way. And that will just leave a little bit more dimension into us. So then the next section will drop down onto the same foil and we can continue applying all the way through. That's so cool, Sean. So that seems so easy. I guess you would say like the number one benefit of doing this versus like, obviously like when people think of a chunky highlight, I don't think they would ever even start with the sectioning and the, and the way that you approached it. So explain to us the theory with the sectioning and how quick the application is. Okay, cool. So the concept behind working with ponytails involves over direction. So you guys know with hair cutting, when you over direct the hair and cut it, it maintains length in a certain area. So the same thing is actually happening here. We're maintaining the length of the dark root in this scenario, dragging all the way from this point up until when it hits the lightener in the foil. So what that does when you release it is it gives you an automatic blend that even if you didn't have a very soft transition here, you could make a hard line. And when that falls back, you're gonna be guaranteed that you're gonna have softness in it. An important thing to keep in mind is just like any elevation, you wanna always be thinking of elevating it up um, above versus dropping it down because then you'll actually see the line. So as long as you're going above the horizontal, you'll always have um, great softness with that. So we'll pretend that I finished that piece now. I wanna show you guys quickly how to get through the top because it's just as simple. I'm gonna be going back to kind of the old school, I think in a way, when you think about hair school or how a lot of people learn how to do foils, it's in like a traditional like mohawk pattern, kind of going back. And the reality is, is if we wanna get some of these chunkier looks, we kind of have to go back to how we used to do things, but add a modern edge to it. So. Here in this front section, I will show you how we begin that. So like I said, I did it already yesterday and I only put in, I think this was six foils that I've started with, but you can see here, again, this is raw and untoned. Um, hopefully you guys can catch the little bit of that face frame and highlight in there. What's yeah. gonna be different about it is um, how we kind of blend by doing different points of lightness on each of our foils. So we know it's popular to do a back-to-back -back foil along the hairline. So that first foil I take out, what I like to do is go right up to, as close as I can to the hairline with that particular foil. So I'll just start placing the foil on and then applying it just like you would any regular foil, making sure to saturate all the way down. Then once this one's in, so this one I took right to the scalp. The next section that I'm gonna take, we're gonna drop it down a little bit further. So again, that's kind of going with that concept of over directing. We're pulling the hair forward to keep a little bit of a natural um, root extension in there, if you will. So this next piece, you can see here in the one that I did previously, the blend begins about an inch down now away from the scalp. So that's going to start to give us that transition so it doesn't look like one really big stripe happening in the front. So I would do one more of those as well, going even further down. And that gives you a really great transition. So in total, that would be three foils that are gonna be back to back. You guys with it so far? So all the way to the scalp, a little bit drop down and then a little yeah. bit drop down even more. So you're almost building in a root. Yep, a root, exactly. root it's shadow. Totally building yep. in a root shadow, and it saves you from having to rely on that root shadow after with like shades of Q or whatever your toning product is going to be. So the last thing I want to show you guys is after you've done that face frame of the three in a row, the most important thing when you're adding lightness around the front of the face is we need to have that shadow to be able to show that light popping. So what I'll do is visually just take a slice and drop it down. And what you want to check out is after your foils are in there, 
how thick is that band? Because the thickness that you have is the thickness of the chunk, quote unquote, of low light that you're going to see. So I usually like to do um, no more than a half an inch. That's gonna be enough to give you a little bit of shadow in there. So once you've left that piece out, then the next foil you're gonna do is going to go, again, right up towards the scalp. This is going to be the closest highlight that you uh, can create. And if your client doesn't wanna see the color right towards the scalp at all, you can definitely start this one lower as well to give it more of a softer um, lived in look. So I'll just finish this one. And then, so the next one that's gonna follow directly behind that, no space left in between, will be another slice horizontally. And then what we're gonna do is instead of going right towards the scalp, I like to take this one and just tease it back. And I only like to push once because then it's easier to comb out after, but I'll use a clip and place the clip in that tease section. And then I can go in and place the foil and begin to do the color. So that's automatically gonna give me more softness. Again, so when these two back-to-back -back foils um, are parted and open up, they don't have that really strong kind of um, 90s, 2000s line, mm -hmm. but it still gives you that flavor. So it's that simple. That's the what's next gonna keep it modern. Yeah, that's what's gonna keep it modern. So all I do is that pattern of those two together, leave another space. Those two together, leave another space. And like I was saying, it really goes back to how we used to do hair, but I think back then it used to be black, blonde, red. Black, blonde, yeah. red. Something oh my really God. crazy. Guilty, oh guilty. <laughs> I mean, it was really easy hair. So the cool thing is with that coming back, um, we already know how to do it. It's just really figuring out how to like finesse it and make it fresh and don't try and put the black blonde red and keep it yeah. Things come back again. The, yeah, the, exactly. the, chunk, the chunky roots, but not the Kelly Clarkson a la 2000. I think everyone happening. can say they had that picture <laughs> brought in or do still. Um, there's one other client I want to talk about. That was our straight smooth haired client. But of course we also have to be able to do color for textured hair. And what we know Love about that. textured hair is that it really responds differently because of the way it lives on the head, right? So if you were to try and do really fine micro highlights in textured hair, it's gonna be completely lost in that end result. So I have two heads, I have a before head and the after of this look. So I'm gonna put them in so you can, the light will adjust for you. So here you can see where she was starting, really dark, just natural textured hair. And here's where we got her to. The cool thing about this look is that there was zero lightener used at all. So the product that I worked with was Redken Blonde Idol High Lift. And that is these guys right here. So they come in this tube. I mixed it with 30 volume and it was able to lift and give me the deposit and really keep the integrity and health of that hair so that it doesn't dry it out even more. So same technique, but done on curly hair. Remember, always take really big sections or do back to back so you don't lose the color effect in that. So Sean, talk to us about the products that you used. What colors did yeah, you so use? Yeah, so the products I use, so for the lightening, it's always the Redken Flash Lift Bonder Inside. It's my go-to lightener. Um, I love to mix it in a one to two ratio. I find it gives me the best consistency for doing foiling. If you're doing balayage like open air, you can use it as well, and it will work great for you for that. The other thing for toning, of course, is Shades EQ Gloss. So using Shades EQ Gloss to finalize this look on this particular mannequin head, I worked with the new Level 10 series. So we've, we've extended our palette in Level 10s and we've uh, brought in like 9P or 10P, 10T. So a lot of cooler shades. This particular one is 10GI. So that's a gold iridescent and you can see it has a really nice balanced tone to it. So. Then the last thing was the high lift. So this is a really a go-to, not just for textured hair, but you can really use this on any hair that doesn't have color in it and be able to get a really beautiful, more sun-kissed result. If someone's okay with a little bit more warmth or a little bit more of a natural effect, it's a great tool to use. Nice, and you use that in place of the lightener. Yeah, I would use that in place of the lightener and that can be mixed with either 10, 20, 30 or 40 volume. So you really have options with it. What you wanna know when you change the developer in each of those is the higher you go with it, the actual, the more warmth you're gonna see with it. So if you wanna control that warmth, you can go in with a lower volume of developer and actually still get a really beautiful result, but with more control over it. Perfect, and what was the um, level of developer you used in the lightener? The level of developer for lightener was 30 volume, and then it was um, 20 volume for the extra, the high level. 
Awesome. Sean, I love that you, that you showed it on both heads of hair. Um, especially just given what's going on in the world right now, but it is like, there's so often times where we teach color classes or cutting classes and we don't um, merge the two together and we don't teach like, does this te technique work on textured hair or not? So I think it's really, really great that you, you showcase that. Well, something I said the other day, I was teaching another virtual class and I said, you know, I don't claim to be a texture expert, but I do claim to be a hair color expert. So really having to understand how to color all types of hair, whatever the canvas is. And then fortunately, you know, we have an amazing team to help me be a better texture expert with Pekila and David. So I was able to actually do the twist set on the mannequin and get that done myself. Nice. Thanks to Pekila's, Pekila's skills. So all of that sharing, I love being a part of the team. That's true. It's such good knowledge though to understand, like, because I think one of the things that you, you said, but I would like to sink in is like for, you didn't just you didn't go straight for the lightener on the textured hair because like lots right. of times that it can kind of disrupt and distort that curl like they avoid going lighter sometimes because then their beautiful curl can be you know it gets irregular or whatever because compromised but so yeah choosing having an option to choose a product that's a little more gentle is, is a great idea because i think a huge myth when it comes to coloring texture hair is we assume that it's because it's a darker level that's going to be very resistant to lift but in fact, textured hair, just like any curly hair, does tend to be really porous and on the drier side. So just like any type of porous hair, it's going to really lift and respond a lot differently um, and faster. So the same way as your fragile light level 10 blondes are responsive, you wanna be aware of that for textured hair and treat it gentler with lower volumes just to really make sure that you keep that curl pattern intact. Always a wealth of knowledge, my friend. So good to see you today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you I'm sure we'll have you on very soon to teach uh, a lot more of these awesome, cool, fun, and fast techniques, because that's what it's all about right now. People want to get in and out of the chair pretty quick. Definitely. He is the master of that. I love that about you, Sean. <laughs> Bravo. Good to you see guys. you, buddy. I'm all right. Sure. We'll see you soon. Take care. All right, all right I know our next guest is a good friend of ours, and I'm going to actually have to look down because I know him well, but I don't... I need to make sure he gets his title correctly so he gets the clout that he deserves here. So um, if you don't know George Papa Nicholas, celebrity um, colorist, he is a hair colorist and brand ambassador with Matrix and Biolage. And so we'd like to welcome George to the show now. Hey there, how are you? That's Hi guys, George. can you see me? Can you hear me? I yeah. I can hear and see you. How's it going? Great, I can't see you guys for some reason, but I'll, I can That's hear you. Okay. All good. good to see you. <laughs> just, tr just trust that we look amazing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's things in California? Uh, good, good. It was a weekend at the beach, so it's been great. Oh, another beach weekend. Nice. Yeah. yeah, we started work last week. The salons reopened, so. Oh, that's Very good. good. That's good. Yeah, it's been How's nuts. So, yeah, we just, uh, you know, the wait list of girls and wearing the mask all day, it's, it's rough. But we're getting through it. I'm You're sure. used to wearing gloves all day, but like the mask can be a whole new thing, right? The mask, yeah, talking for 12 hours a day with a mask is rough. Like that, I, well, that we're not used to. Yeah. And you're not chatty at all. And I'm not what? <laughs> chatty. No, no, yeah. exactly. <laughs> no, his no, clients are like, they, his clients are like, keep the mask idea. We like this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, George. So um, you wanted to show us a technique also today, yeah? Um, um, I think I you guys have some images. I think you guys have some images and videos. Do you guys have? Those? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can we can fly those up. And I just want to throw out the first question as as people are seeing the the beautiful work that you do. Okay. Um, like, what are the place, best places to strategically place color in your mind when you're looking at these kinds of looks? Yeah, um, you know, for me, like the way I work, it's it's very much strategic, um, especially when it comes to balayage. Um, I really focus on three main areas. It's um, face frame, the natural part, and the ends. Um, I think if you really target those areas, it, it really accomplishes a couple of things. Number one, that's where you're gonna get the maximum impact from your application. Um, it's also where you know the, the photograph is gonna capture the light. So if you think about like, you know, whether it's a celebrity client or just a regular girl, you know, she's not gonna be photographing the nape of her neck. She's gonna be photographing from the front, from the sides. It's where the sun would hit it, and that's really where you want to get the pop. But it's also keeping a lot of negative space in the hair. I, th I think that's important to have, you know, a lot of their foundational color, keeping that depth in there. That that's what really makes the highlights really pop. But the other thing is, it also keeps the hair healthy. You know, when you yeah. keep a lot of the hair virgin, healthy, 
um, their hair is going to feel better. It's going to get longer. It's going to stay thicker. And there's going to be a higher chance that those clients are going to rebook and, and kind of stick with you. Sure. Yeah, they Talk tend to, to come back more. Sorry, Nick, I had no, to make right. a joke there. They tend to come back more when you don't fry their hair off, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want anybody's hair to be fried off. So, you know, everybody talks about like seamless, effortless color. Like, what does that mean to you and how do you achieve it? Um, well, for me, I think that that's what separates, I think, like amazing colorists and like what you typically would get, I think, in most salons is like, I think I call it like the noodles. I think no clients want to leave with like streaky hard lines. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean um, application per se. It's it's a lot of the finishing techniques after. Um, mm -hmm. For me, the way I approach hair color, I, I tend to do a lot of freehand work. And the reason I like that is because I can go super delicate at the root and then I can gradually get thicker and heavier as I move down the hair shaft. And what that does is that it allows me to not have to really use toner. Because if I keep the highlights super soft at the root, you don't get the hard streaky lines. But a lot of people, you know, if I do foils though, then I would go back with a toner because you know, if you just foil a client, it's, it's typically gonna give you a harsher line and much more contrast. So in that case, I would definitely go back and shadow root, you know, create that blended effect. And you know, for me, that's what clients want. Like I think modern hair right now, they don't really want hard lines. Even when they want the chunky hair, they still don't want hard lines that you guys talked about earlier. Yeah. yeah, we agree, yeah. Yeah, you're you're building off of what Sean was saying, right? Keeping that up. Um, so I wanted to ask you, um, so you said sometimes you do, sometimes you don't use toner, right? Just depending on what you're, but like, when are the key, like, is it, like, what are the key moments when you're like, this is definitely a moment where I need to use a toner just for people who have never, they're kind of trying to figure out, should this be toned or should it not? So my, my blondes, I like to keep them really vibrant, you know, so unless, it, unless I'm doing a platinum blonde, then I would use like, you know, a platinum toner, but typically like a beachy blonde, blonde, I don't necessarily use a lot of toner unless it goes towards the root area. You know, I, I like to keep that depth in the root. I, I think it's really current. I don't like hard lines there, especially. Um, but overall, I like to keep the hair really, really vibrant. But then let's say brunettes or redheads, that's a whole different story. You know, brunettes, then you're going to be fighting with a lot of oranges and reds. Right. That's when I would go in and use a gloss over to kind of balance out and give me, you know, a more blended effect. Um, also with redheads, you know, I think one thing that drives me crazy when I see redheads with highlights is like they've got this like corn on the cob yellow color, you know, on top of their copper base, which that just is enough. It's just not a flattering shade. So if you go over it with like a really sheer copper gold, that just balances it out and marries the whole thing. And it creates like a really sophisticated finish. And, and it's really what a redhead's natural hair color would do versus like a bright, you know, yellow hair. Yeah, of course. Talk to me about, you know, a lot of colorists, you know, they never know when to use a toner. You know, when is the right time to use a toner? Or who's the right client to use a toner on? Um, personally, I find if I'm working with virgin hair, the less likely I'm going to need to use a toner because it tends to lift kind of ideally to where I want to get it. Um, I also with my, my brunettes and browns, I, I'm really good about taking it to where I want it. So I don't take it to white and then go back and tone. I feel like that's a, that's a wrong approach for hair color. I, I think a really a master colorist knows when to take the highlights off and knows that this is the right tone, whether it's a caramel, a honey, you know, baby blonde. <laughs> it's pretty easy to get there when you're dealing with virgin hair. Now, artificial color brings a whole other, you know, set of complications in. So that's when you you may need to go in, use toners, but you have to kind of just look at it and see. Um, I, I do also a lot of the back combing and teasing techniques. And also what I find with those is that I think when that hair gets brushed back down, that almost creates like a toning effect. So the hair actually has a more balanced color and it's a much prettier finish and it may not need toner, but you really have to look at it at the shampoo bowl and kind of decide you know, what the client wants and what your end goal is. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Um, George, so you, I mean, you've done every celebrity I can think of practically. So um, is there anything as we're kind of like getting to the end of the show about, you know, balayage and blonde, blonde like blonde, balayage and beyond, but also like here we are coming into somewhere, people are going to be like, you know, they're, they're running into your salons already. Like anything you want to say to, to, um, hair professionals out there about like some, some final tips that you'd like to leave with them about just like making sure their blondes are celebrity worthy? Um, you know, I think, I think a lot of it's just, you know, keeping their hair really healthy. Um, less is more, I think is a really, a, a really good approach. I think 
I think for me, like keeping it really effortless looking is what makes it look cool. Um, if you if you over highlight the hair, the whole thing ends up looking just really yellow. So I yeah. think it's important keeping keeping that contrast in there, keeping that depth. That's what's going to make it look really effortless and cool. Um, and, I, and I think that's kind of where the trends are going. And, and even like the chunkiness, like I'm actually super into it. I am super into it. So, but the chunkiness to, to do that and to really get it to look good means that you need to have a lot of shadow in there. There has to be a lot of that depth in there. And I think that's where people almost like they have a hard time restraining because they feel like, okay, I'm charging this client so much money. I can't only do six highlights, but really honestly, like sometimes that six highlights is enough to give you that impact and give you that pop. And, and like, those are the trends you want as a hairstylist. Like, yeah. Those make your job easy. You know, you don't want that hundred foil highlight to be trendy. Like for me, like I run away from those things, but you know, so. <laughs> sometimes less is more, right? Yeah, you only want two big chunks in front, sold. So. Cheers. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really glad you actually that the last point I think really just kind of like fused in both what you and Sean said together, so that we don't because sometimes you risk like when you start to talk to to hairdressers who they're learning virtually, right? And so then they're gonna go into the salon, they're gonna start putting into application, but there's a few key things that really, are, they're their make or break, right? They're make or break deals. And I think the way you very eloquently just kind of described, um, you know, that, that subtle finish and that softness to it really just kind of brought the trend that Sean delivered into a place that like, keep it tasteful, right? Keep it tasteful and keep it in, in that lens. So thank you so much for your Thanks, expertise. Guys. Thanks for sharing this technique. Uh, good luck out there with those masks. We miss Thanks. you. We'll come see you soon, okay? <laughs> All right, definitely, guys. Hope to see you soon. All right, take care. Take care, buddy. Take care. Bye. All right, Ammon. So lots of great color tips for today, but we have more coming this week. Not necessarily around color, but what's happening in the industry. So why don't we talk about what's going on for this Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited about this this episode coming on Wednesday um, because we have a uh, gentleman and Jason coming on from Paul Mitchell. And Nick, you actually helped me um, explore a little bit more thoroughly the world of Paul Mitchell. And I have been so blown away by their conscious efforts to do good things in the world and to do good things for the environment that I thought, what a great episode in a world right now that we just kind of we need any kind of goodness that we can take. And if we can yeah. bring a brand on board that can uh, talk about the launches of their fantastic products, the success of such a great brand, but also like all the good that they're doing. So yeah. Um, yeah. on Wednesday, it'll be called for, a, for a, um, a better world. Yeah, no, I look forward to that. Yeah, Paul Mitchell's doing a lot of great things. We won't talk about it too much because we want everybody to come back Wednesday. Right. See Mr. Jason Yates, hear all about the great things that JP and that team is doing. Uh, so for now, that's a wrap for today. Good to see everyone on the show tonight. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday. Have a great Bye. day.